Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Some short items and on to the main subject. I need to take care of a little business, starting with a comment I got this morning from Turbo Jones, who comments very often, probably more often than anybody, and now Turbo Jones says he's not going to post comments anymore, which is fine. My only concern is he said he's not going to comment anymore because his comments get censored or deleted or something. My understanding is that he comments to a number of vlogs, not just to mine, and some of these other vlogs are deleting his comments and he just doesn't want to bother anymore. That's okay if that's what I understand and if what I understand is correct. My only concern is that he might be saying that he got censored from my vlog. I haven't censored him. I've only, well, I never censor a particular comment. If I get somebody who is really, I guess it's spam is mostly. I get sometimes things that are really just advertisements. So I just delete the whole person. I just shut off their access. But I never visit my own vlogs to check what's going on as far as comments. They come into my inbox. That's where I see them. I don't pull up my own vlogs to watch on YouTube because I want to see how many views I'm getting, obviously, and I don't want any of the views to be me because I won't be able to keep track of it, and I don't want to falsely inflate my viewership numbers by visiting my own vlogs. So I just see what comes into my inbox. I assume that if I see it in my inbox that it's appearing on the vlog when all of you go to visit. But maybe I'm wrong. That's what I'm concerned about. So if anybody else sees that their comments are not appearing in the comments section, please let me know and I'll check, contact YouTube or do whatever I have to do to track down the problem because I am not going around deleting comments. I usually just let people say what they want to say. I even decided that I wasn't going to delete anti-Semites, for instance, because I thought that everybody should see what they're saying, that there are such people and what they're saying, that it doesn't behoove me to delete those comments, pretend that they don't exist. Now, maybe I would change if things got really out of hand, but for now, that's my policy. So again, if your comments are not appearing, please let me know because I do want everybody to comment. I would like to see all of you debating each other. Now, I want to go on now to uh, tweet. Well, I'm going to be talking about Bernie Sanders, and I'm going to be talking about Michael Bloomberg, and I'm going to be talking about the Democratic primary debate in Nevada that was last night, the day before I'm recording this. There have been reports. I'm not going to put up a bunch of headlines. You can just look them up. But violence, violence at Bernie Sanders rallies, not Often, I don't want to exaggerate it, but they have been. Uh, there was somebody wearing a, uh, it was a black person actually, wearing a t-shirt that said, black guns matter. He was physically attacked. He was physically attacked. He was shouted at and attacked. This has been happening at the Bernie Sanders rallies. Well, somebody named Keith Ellison, if you don't know who he is, he was a congressman. He is now the attorney general of Minnesota. He put up a tweet. Here's the tweet. I have never seen Bernie Sanders supporters being unusually mean or rude. Can someone send me an example of a quote, Bernie bro, unquote, being bad. Also, are we holding all candidates responsible for the behavior of some of their supporters waiting to hear? Steve Scalise responded, tweeted back, I can think of an example. And who is Steve Scalise, in case you forgot? He is a Republican congressman who was shot. 
He was one of a number of people who were shot. He wasn't the only one, or at least shot at, but he definitely was seriously wounded by James Hodgkinson, a Bernie bro. That's a Bernie Sanders supporter, or a, a strong Bernie Sanders supporter, at a congressional baseball game or a practice session for a congressional baseball game between Democrats and Republicans, something I understand they do every year just a little friendly get together but he was shot so if you want an example well there is an example uh, mr ellison as well as the one i just gave you of the black person called a racist because he was wearing a shirt that said black guns matter obviously a play on the phrase you may have heard black lives matter he's talking about black guns matter the right of people to defend themselves, but especially black people should be able to defend themselves. And I could ask rhetorically, if every black person had had a gun in the early days of our country, maybe the history of slavery would have been a little different, do you think? Just thought I would throw that out there. Now, I want to get to the debate last night Everybody was watching to see how Mike Bloomberg would do. I wasn't expecting him to do very well, and I was not disappointed in that respect. I'm sure those of you who saw it would agree. That seems to be all over the news. Nobody is saying that he did well. A lot of pundits are saying that his performance finished off his campaign. But there are some caveats. There are some pundits saying that is not necessarily true. They are saying that that did not finish him. And he may get better in future debates. I would say that post yesterday's debate that Sanders is the presumptive front runner, presumptive nominee. I mean, he is a front runner. He's a presumptive nominee. There is speculation by one pundit that he may have it all wrapped up by the end of Super Tuesday. The reason being that the convention delegates are assigned proportionately by how many people vote for that candidate in each state. But there is also a 15% threshold. You have to get at least 15% of the primary vote in a particular state in order to get any delegates at all. Right now in California, which has over 400, I believe it's 413 delegates, a large chunk of the 1900, 1910, whatever total amount you need to win the nomination, that only one candidate is polling currently in California above 15%. That candidate is Bernie Sanders. So if that poll result holds through the actual primary, that means that Bernie Sanders will get all 413 delegates of the California primary. That may wrap it up for him because there is a website 538. It's a polling, well, not a polling website. It's a prediction website by Nate Silver, who is a statistician and a very good one. His predictions are usually pretty accurate. 538 is the combined number of senators and congressmen, in case you're wondering. 438 in the House, 100 in the Senate. And he goes through the math. He looks at all the polls, puts them all together, and comes up uh, with a prediction. But what he also does is he calculates the odds of somebody winning going forward based on the number of delegates so far. And the number, well, what he does, he'll say this candidate has this percentage if he has 40%. I'm not doing the actual math, but he'll say if candidate X has 40 percent that would mean that that would mean that one of the multiple candidates would have to win 60 percent of the remaining votes so you see how that works as Bernie Sanders garners more votes 
that lessens the odds of somebody getting enough votes going forward to pull ahead of him, even if he doesn't have a majority yet. So that, and I'm going to get back to this in a second, but that's why I say it's looking increasingly like Sanders is a nominee, especially if he wins all of California's delegates. And remember, there's Super Tuesday. That's only one state. So there are a number of states who will all be voting on that one day. They call Super Tuesday. So he could have it all wrapped up by then. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Now, getting back to Bloomberg, as I said, pundits are counting him out now. They're saying because of his performance or his poor performance in the Nevada debate that he's finished. But there are some pundits who say that is not necessarily true. There are three caveats. One of them is obviously that he has a lot of money. He doesn't have to worry about campaign contributions drying up. And by the way, Elizabeth Warren got a very big boost just in the 24 hours since the debate. In fact, it's less than 24 hours as I'm recording this. I would say maybe three quarters of a day. She was struggling to come up with money to continue going forward. She just raised almost $3 million since the close of the debate last night, Bernie Sanders got just about the same amount. She got slightly more than he did. I think she got 2.8 million, he got 2.7 million. The other ones far behind, and of course, Bloomberg again, he's not taking any campaign contributions. So that is one caveat. He can stay through till the end. And if he does, well, I'll get to that in a second, give you two more caveats. One of them is that he's been just blanketing the airwaves with ads. So many ads that nobody can go through a day, especially in certain states, without hearing multiple ads for Mike Bloomberg. The point being that that number, the number of people hearing his ads, watching his ads, is far greater than the number of people who watched that debate last night. So even though he did very poorly, obviously that's not going to affect, uh, unless somebody reads about it in a news story, it's not going to have that much of an effect on somebody who didn't even see the debate. And that is most of the people who are hearing from Mike Bloomberg. Even after that debate, all they know about him is what they're hearing from the ads. So that is another caveat. And the last caveat is the superdelegates at the convention, which has to do with the ability of Bloomberg to stay in till the end. Because if it's a brokered convention, the superdelegates as you may know, they took the nomination away from Bernie Sanders in 2016 because they were able to vote. You have these delegates in all the individual states, but then you have these super delegates who are just party stalwarts, uh, you know, elites. They are allowed to vote too. They weighed heavily against Sanders in 2016. Now, because of that, because of the protests, the Democratic Party changed the rules for this convention. In this convention, the superdelegates cannot vote, but that's only on the first ballot. If Sanders or any other candidate sews it up on the first ballot, has enough delegates going into the convention, then the superdelegates are irrelevant. But if a candidate does not have enough votes and it goes into a brokered convention to another ballot, then starting on the second ballot, the superdelegates can vote and they can vote for Mike Bloomberg, even if he has fewer delegates. And the way he's been throwing money around, that's a theory by these pundits who hold this theory, that because he's been throwing money around so much and contributing so much to the Democratic Party and because he's not a socialist like Sanders, the superdelegates would have a tendency to prefer 
Bloomberg and might nominate him, in which case all hell will break loose among the Sanders supporters. And this gets me now to my main point because, well, as I've said in the past, what I try to do whenever I can is to give all of you an insight that no one else has given you, that no one else has commented on, and especially to point out hypocrisy. I'm going to do both right now because one of the interesting questions in the debate last night was near the end where Chuck Todd went down the entire roster of candidates saving Sanders for last for obvious reasons as you'll see but asking each of them if nobody has enough delegates to win outright going into the convention then should the candidate with the most delegates coming into the convention get the nomination. Obviously Sanders who has so far the most delegates and may very well have the most delegates going into the convention even if not enough to win outright. Obviously he believes that the candidate with the most delegates should get the nomination. So that's why Chuck Todd saved him for last because his answer is obvious. But what was interesting was that all the other candidates, well, in a way, it wasn't surprising, but they all said no. It, they should follow the process. The party should follow the process and go through this process where if it's a brokered convention, there would be wheeling and dealing. Two candidates could maybe not have enough delegates to win outright, but pooling their delegates together might have the most delegates and then one could agree to run for president and the other one would be vice president or, what, or whatever and then these super delegates could come in. So they're saying that that should be the process. Now when I heard those answers from all of these candidates, that's when my hypocrisy meter just started ringing bells and, and the lights went off because at least some of those candidates, if I understand correctly, but certainly a lot of Democrats, but I believe some of these, at least one of these other candidates, and I wish that Todd would have followed up with this question, they have been complaining about the electoral college complaining that Trump won with the most electoral votes but lost the popular vote. So I would have asked them, well, okay, now you're saying that the convention, the selection of the candidates, that should not be by popular vote. That should be by some other process but not the popular vote because that's how the delegates are assigned until you get to the convention. They are assigned by popular vote. If you win 20% of the popular vote in a particular state primary, you get 20% of the delegates. But they say that that should not be the process, but that should be the process for the election. So do you see the hypocrisy there that they, on the one hand, are against selecting the candidate by the popular vote, but they want to select the president by the popular vote. As I said, that just stuck out to me. I'm surprised that nobody called them out on that because I would have gone right down the line and asked them that question. You just said this. Now you have in the past said that. Resolve the contradiction. That would have been nice to see. And what would also be nice to see is a thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with anybody you think would also like the video. Got any comments? Put them in the comments section below the video. As well as any questions you might have or suggestions for future topics. I would love to get more subscribers. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And finally, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, Bye.